Hi guys and welcome to another general maths video. Really good to see you. Hope you are well. Um, yep, it's Darren here, Maths Guru, uh, doing another one of these amazing videos. <laughs> I say they're amazing, it could be awful. No, it's not. I promise you, it'd be really, really good. Stick with me. If you can, do me a favour and subscribe on my YouTube channel and head over to MathsGuru.com where you can search for all these videos and download them with notes and exam questions coming a little bit later on. Yes, and spread the word. If you would, never going to be rich, certainly never going to be famous, but your help and support is greatly appreciated. Well, at least if I can get more than 10 people watching these videos. What are our learning objectives? We're going to understand what a logarithm is. Now, weirdly, if you can get this sorted now in year 11, then year 12, where we do this again in further maths, you are going to smash it. There's really not a lot to logarithms once you get your head around what they are. And this video is going to explain a little bit of that to you, a little bit more in depth next year, okay? Understand how to use logarithms and convert from logs and into ordinary numbers. You can like, logs? What's a log? Don't ruin the pun, it's on its way. All right, so I say here that basically this video is part of a preliminary and fundamentals part of the general maths course. Why? Because so much of the stuff we're doing in this chapter is really, really important. So recapping it now, getting it in your head, being able to apply it is gonna make later work so, so much easier. What are logs? I couldn't resist it. Look, logs, pictures of logs. No, we don't do anything like that here. Okay, so what are logs? Basically, logs are a way for us to fudge big numbers and make them smaller. That's, that's really all it is. We basically turn around and go, do you know what? I don't like big numbers anymore. I want to turn big numbers into small numbers. How possibly can we do this? Well, basically, as I say here, if we were actually to try and do a scale up to one million, yeah, then our graph might look terrible. We may end up with a lot of data items squished around here, maybe one here, one here, and one over here. All right, now that doesn't really tell us too much about the graph, or it doesn't look particularly good, and I don't know about you, I have no idea how I'm gonna do a scale up to a million. So we've created a new number system called a log. All right, and a log system, yes, I'm trying really hard not to do the most obvious log jokes because it's a bit base. <laughs> That's actually a mass joke. I don't know what's going on here. I've recorded too many videos, nurse. Uh, no. All right, so basically logs have something to do with powers. We have the numbers, for example, 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, blah, blah, blah. What do we notice about each of those numbers? Well, I'm going to write them long ways. 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. Uh, 100,000, okay. Now basically, we know we can write 100 as 10 times 10, or 10 with a floaty two, all right? That's what I'm talking about powers, yeah? So I call floaty numbers or powers floaty numbers or whatever else. How about 1,000? Well, we know that that's 10 times, he says, 10 times 10, which can be written as 10 to the floaty three. Hold on a moment, I'm seeing a pattern. That would be, let's put an equal sign there, 10, times 10, times 10, times 10, which is 10 to the floaty four. Aha, so with an extra zero, we seem to be going up in these floaty numbers. And so yes, that there would be 10 to the floaty five, which would suggest then that that becomes 10 to the floaty one, and that would be 10 to the floaty zero. Now there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, that anything to the floaty zero is one. That's something else in a different exam or a different question altogether. Now. If we look at the floaty numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Oh my goodness, I have just turned a really large number of 10,000 into the number five, if I think of it in a different way. And I've turned, sorry, 100,000 into five, 10,000 into four, 1,000 into three. Oh, so going back to that graph, imagine now if I could redraw this where it had that number there wasn't, uh, what would that be, a million, so that would be, wouldn't be 10 to the floaty six, it would be the number six. All I've done is fudge the numbers. And that's basically what we do with powers. So if I have the number 100, I now know that that can be written as 10 to the power of two. They are equivalent. So I now need to find a way of getting rid of the 10 to the power and just writing the two, because that's gonna be what a logarithm is. And funnily enough, this is what we write. We write log with a little bottom 10 there, and I'll explain that in a moment, 100, then becomes equal to two, all right? So by writing this thing in front of it, this log with a 10, I can basically get rid of this 
and just write the two. ka -ching! So let's see, what about 1,000? Well, we know the 1,000 is equal to 10 to the floaty 3. If I just wanted a 3 there, what would I have to write on the left-hand side? Well, I would write the log with a little floaty 10 or a little below 10 of 1, 1, 2, 3 is equal to 3 and ka -ching. Life is absolutely awesome. So if we want to try and find the log of a number, then actually all we need to do is type log, and again with this little 10, of the number, and whatever comes out here is really just the floaty number on the power of 10. Oh, this, I, I, this is the best I've ever taught this. No students, all right, it's so hot in this room at this moment in time you won't believe, I, I should do more. Um, what about this little 10? Okay, the reason this here is a little 10 actually goes back to what I was saying earlier, because we have the power of 10, all right? So because we're doing this 10 to the power of, that's why the log has that lower 10. Believe it or not, we can have logs of all sorts of numbers. We can have log base two, three, four, five, all sorts of stuff. But luckily in this particular course, we don't have to worry about it. We're just dealing with log 10. Now, what about small numbers? Well, actually we can do the log of small numbers too. How? Well, we actually know that 0 0.1 is the same as one on 10, which whether you know this or not, and again, it's not a huge deal if you don't, but it's good if you do, is can actually be written as 10 to the power of minus one. Okay, now Mrs. Hurst, who was the love of my life, basically told me that when you've got a little floaty number there, which is a one, and you move it from the bottom to the fraction to the top, you just put a minus sign in front of it. I'll show you again. So 0 0.01 is actually the same as one on 100. See what we're doing now? So that is actually one on 10 squared. And because I have a floaty number, I can move that up to the top and that becomes 10 to the floaty minus two. And 0 0.001 is one on, well, we'll just go straight now to 10 cubed, which is the same as 10 to the minus three. And what do we notice? We absolutely, we now have numbers going minus one, minus two, and minus three. So those really small numbers, which are getting smaller and smaller and smaller in quite a large way, believe it or not, much like our bigger numbers, can also be expressed with minus floaty powers of 10, which must mean that they can have negative logs too. Right, so let's write the number 0 0.001 as a power of 10. So again, we've got 0 0.001, I know that that's one divided by 10 to the floaty three. Now I'm gonna show you a shortcut. There are three numbers after the decimal place there, and so that means that it's 10 to the floaty three. But as I say there, that is a shortcut and it only works with decimal numbers with zeros and one one in it, all right? So again, I hate shortcuts because it frustrates me. It makes much more sense for you to realize that that is the same as one divided by a thousand and again when you have one divided by a thousand you move the decimal point three places to the left so there's the decimal point one two three which gives you 0 0.001 that's the best way to think about this it's all place value and it goes back to your stuff you've done before so so important that you don't try and remember shortcuts but if all else fails remember the shortcut okay so that is the same as uh, 10 to the minus three so deleting this for a moment to sort of give me an idea of where I'm going. That now means that we can express 0 0.001 is the same as 10 to the minus three. Now again, if I wanna get rid of that, that big 10 and just leave the power, what do I have to write on the left-hand side? ka -ching. I have to write then that the log base 10 of the number I'm given is equal to minus three, yeah? So again, whenever you see that minus three when you've got a log, it's just a power of 10. That's gonna be important in a moment, all right? So sadly, not all numbers are nice and easy, as I say here. As much as we would love to deal with just 10 and 100 and 1,000 and a million and all that type of stuff, we don't. We can deal with other numbers as well, all right? Now, the great news is that when that happens, we can use our CAS. And how do we do it? Well, you basically just type log of the number. Now again, I've changed calculators because I've changed schools, so I'm back to the TI Inspire. Um, hopefully this will make sense. I know the Casio, uh, the class pad, has a log function in keyboard one, if I remember rightly. Yes, it may look slightly, in fact there's two of them from what I remember, but um, I'll try and add instructions for those some other time. 
So zooming in on this, it's all about the bass. And I so desperately wanted to put a bit of Megan Trainer into my uh, videos, but unfortunately I would contravene copyright and I really don't want to get a slap on the wrist from Megan Trainer or anyone for that matter. So when you type the log button and it's there above, oh, I can't, I've got my calculator, but it's definitely there above one of the keys to the left of the four. It might be left of the nine or seven, it's one of them anyway. What I do when I hit the log button is I get this. I get a log with two little boxes, one here and one there. That button there, that box there is where you're going to put the number you're trying to turn into a log. If you don't put anything in that bottom box, your calculator automatically assumes you're going to deal with log 10. And for the whole of this course and for further maths, you're only going to deal with log 10. Look, if you want to write 10 in there, knock yourself out. Otherwise, just leave it as it is, and because the question I've been given says, find the log of 45, what we're now saying is that the log of 45 is equal to 1.65321 dot, 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 dot. Turning that on its head, what does that mean? Well, remember, that means that 45 is equal to 10 to the power of 1.65321. If you don't believe me, do 10, floaty number, 1.63 blah, 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 and lo and behold you will get 45 or will you interestingly if you have to do that on your calculator what you'll probably find is that it will give you something close to 45 but not 40 regardless of what that my calculator suggests here it's still rounded that value all right so it's not going to give me 45 on the nose i mean it might do it's highly unlikely but be aware that math has got rounding errors as well and as i say here it's just important to realize that when you have log 1045 equals 1.65 dot 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 you can turn that back and know that that means that 45 is equal to 10 to the power of 1.65 there are questions on this all the time particularly in further maths in year 12 get this smashed and you're fine all right what about finding a number from its logarithm well i've just been talking about that that's why i've been talking about this and doing it backwards right so for example we've got a question here find the number whose log is 3.1876 all right so we've got the log base 10 of some number let's call it x is equal to 3.1876 well how do i get x on its own all right well i'm trying to find the value of x well we now say that x is equal to 10 to the power of 3.1876 i've put that into my calculator and lo and behold out comes the value of 1540.2 Two, eight. Now I'm going to round it to two decimal places. Please don't think, oh, you know, the calculator just rounded it. I'm just going to put 1,540. That's not what it's being asked for, right? You're being asked to find that exact value. And in an exam, the chances are they're going to explain it to you and to have you round it to a number of decimal places. All right. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that is all for this particular lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you have found it useful. Many, many more coming in the coming days. All right. If you can, leave some feedback, leave a comment. Just say hi, that would be greatly appreciated. Let mates know, sign up to mathguru.com and head over to YouTube. By the time you've done all that, you'll be exhausted. <sighs> like I am. All right, there's more coming. Take care. My name is Darren, I'm Mathguru, and I look forward to seeing you again. Stay safe.